Today, we're going to unbox this brand new print, and I'm going to talk about how we get it from raw file to the wall. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Sum of It Gallery. Um, today, we are excited because we have a brand new addition to the Sum of It Gallery. This is gonna be a 40 by 90 triptych. So we're really excited to get it up on this wall and then show you guys how it looks. But I also thought it'd be really fun to kind of show you my process for getting the, the raw file into a triptych and then printed. Um, we use Bay Photo for our prints. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have a process. Lots of people say that our print seems super, super sharp. So I'm kind of excited to share with you my full workflow from getting my edited file um, basically onto the wall. Here we are in Lightroom and uh, I've got my um, edited raw file here. And um, but before we jump into this process, um, I would like to just go over a couple of things real quick. For one, um, I'm not saying that this is the best um, technique for preparing print files in the entire world. <laughs> um, I'm sure that there are lots of other um, really great ways and I'm sure that some people who are, are experts in the subject are, are going to um, look at this video and feel like it's either oversimplified or, or not what they would do but um, I can say that it has worked really well for me. I have some really big really sharp prints hanging in our gallery and so you know, I, I do have results that kind of speak to that this this technique has worked well for me. So, but I'm also not saying it's necessarily the best. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, another one quick thing before we get in that I'm not going to really get into in depth in this video is monitor calibration and color calibration. Um, I would say that that's a pretty important thing to do. Um, I can link to my monitor calibrator. Um, that being said, I have printed before without calibrating my MacBook Pro screen and it's done um, a decent job. I really haven't noticed a lot of issue, but I would definitely recommend that you do that if you are going to be printing regularly. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this file here. Um, we are looking at a 129 megapixel panorama. So this is several shots with the Canon R5. Now, um, I have done this technique with um, files from lots of different cameras, the Canon R5, the A7R4, and even clear down to APS-C cameras like the Canon 60D and 7D um, Mark I, the original 7D, and it works for any of those. I have a actually a print in the gallery right now taken with the um, 7D that is uh, 40 printed 40 by 50 inch and it's a actually a single shot so it's not even a panorama so you know you can still print big with lower megapixel files and this is a technique to kind of help you um, get it there so okay so the first step is going to be just to open up this file in Photoshop and the way I'm going to do that is open as a smart object in Photoshop right here we are in Photoshop and I opened it as a smart object. Part of the reason I open it as a smart object in Photoshop is just to kind of keep it separated from when you just click, right click on it and click edit in Photoshop. Um, that can just like that file goes into your catalog and, and can cause a whole bunch of problems. And really, I just want to copy that's in Photoshop. So the first thing is I'm going to do a little bit of file prep on the image. So um, something you've probably noticed is that images tend to print a little bit darker then they appear on your screen. It's one reason why it's recommended that you don't keep your screen at full brightness when you're editing. But even still, um, I like to boost it a little bit more. So um, I'm just gonna create an adjustment layer here with curves. And I'm just gonna grab it right in the middle and then just raise it up just ever so slightly. Just until, just until it looks a little bit too bright for my eye. Um, so you just want it to be like, oh, well, if you, this were a file that you were going to like share on Instagram or um, on the web, on your website, like you'd be like, oh, it's a little too bright. But for print, this is probably going to be about right. But you obviously don't want to clip anything. And if you're in danger of that, you need to like open up your histogram and stuff like that. But 
we're good on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image. And that's gonna go ahead and merge that curse file down and it's also gonna make this not a smart, smart object anymore. All right, so now that we've done that, um, it's time to uh, crop it to the correct aspect ratio. So this is gonna be a three panel triptych. Um, so, and it's going to be three panels that are each 30 inches by 40 inches. So I'm gonna open this up and so that means it's gonna be 90 inches by 40 inches. And you can see I was literally just doing this earlier. <laughs> so um, I already have that entered in, but this is where you'd enter in the 90 and then the 40. And then you click on it. And what's nice is, is that the crop tool kind of divides it up into these three sections. So you can kind of see what each panel is gonna look like. So we're just gonna make a little bit of an adjustment. I wanna leave some breathing room up above the summit there but this is looking good. So we'll press the check mark on that and it's gonna crop, it's a nice big file, so that takes a second. Okay, there we go. So now we want to divide this into three equal sections. The easy way to do that is to go to view, um, new guide layout, and then in the dialog box hot here, just enter three columns. Um, so the way that I do my triptychs, I do them where they they butt up right next to each other. That actually gives some flexibility in how you hang them on the wall. Some people like pushing the, the panels right up next to each other. Some people like living a leaving a little bit of breathing room. Um, and I find that if you hang them like two, three inches apart, your brain naturally fills in the gap, even though they technically it makes it look, um, it just, it doesn't, I, it's not noticeable to me. So I like the, um, the flexibility of just the three different columns, but you can add a gutter if you want to do the math. Um, that's all done here and you can figure that out. And then, so all of that, but I'm not going to do that for sake of simplicity in this video. And then also that's not how I actually use my, actually how I print my files. So, okay, we'll click. Okay. All right, so now that we have our three different sections on this image, it's time to create the file that I'm gonna bring the panels into that's gonna be ready to print. Oh, I'm personal. So I'm gonna click File, New. All right, and it's a 30 by 40 inch panel, each one. So I would enter 30 and then 40. And then here is some other important things. Um, right here, you see resolution is 300 pixels per inch. That's very important for printing. Um, with digital, you can do 70 to, and sometimes 150, but with printing, you wanna make sure it's 300 pixels per inch. And RGB color, that's good. So one thing I wanted to mention real quick was that I'm going to be ordering these prints from Bay Photo. And Bay Photo has different specifications that they require. Um, they request either sRGB or Adobe RGB color. So right here, we've got Pro Photo RGB. We're gonna change that to sRGB. Um, actually, let's do Adobe RGB because I think I changed in my camera the settings to Adobe RGB. So we'll make sure that's Adobe RGB. And then the other thing, 8-bit is what they would like. So we'll go ahead and click Create. And we'll get out of the crop tools so it doesn't look so it looks weird. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select these panels. So when you're selecting the panel, so one thing I would want to make sure is that you have snap turned on. That just makes it really easy to select each section. So we'll go to edit, copy, and then into our new folder, edit, paste. It's gonna have this dialog box is gonna come up and you're just gonna click okay. There it is. So let's go ahead and do that with the other two panels. Edit, copy. Edit, paste. Same dialog box. Let's go ahead and just tell it not show again, but it's just important to know this pops up, but that is okay because that is the settings that you wanted. 
Um, and then this last one. Copy. And paste. All right, so here we go. We have three, all three of our panels as layers here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select all three. And then I'm going to go to edit, free transform. That's gonna make a little bounding box here. And I'm gonna take this top middle handle and drag it up to the top until it snaps. And then this bottom little handle down to the bottom until it snaps. So, and then click the check mark for okay. So what is it that we just did? Well, we resized the image up to our print size. So this is actual print size now. And what Photoshop does is it does a great job of actually converting and creating pixels and, and adding sharpness and resolution to it. Um, it does, I, I find Photoshop does a really great job. But the advantage of doing this manually is that now we can inspect the, the image we have here and make adjustments as needed. So as you can see, this is at 16.67%. Go ahead and double click on that and type in 100 and that's gonna take us in. So as you can see, we're very sharp here. This is gonna print very well. The Canon R5 and the 100 to 500, which is the lens this was taken with, are a great combination. But let's say this you kind of want this to be a little sharper. So I do have a sharpening technique that I'm gonna show you. I um, don't know that I'll actually use it on this on this image for printing because I feel like this is already kind of where I want sharpness wise. I don't want to be too sharp, but um, because I do oftentimes sharpen them, especially as I bring them up, uh, upscale them to the correct print size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy of this layer here. All right, and I'm gonna go up to filter, other high pass. This is kind of an old school sharpening technique. So here we are in the high pass dialog. And what you're gonna wanna do is find a setting where you can see a little bit of texture from the image, um, but no glow. So, and also how much. So if like, if you see as I turn this up, you're seeing a hard glow around the ridge there. And then, you know, all up in here, you wanna turn it down to where you're barely seeing any texture at all. So I'm thinking, well, I'm at 3.6 here. That's probably about perfect. I can look at this little preview. You can see, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of detail. Click okay. And then you take this new layer, you turn it to overlay, and there you have a sharpened image. Now, this is over sharpened. <laughs> Um, but it really does a fantastic job. I feel like per particularly for print of kind of um, Making a print look really really sharp, but this is probably over sharpened. It still looks great and you can kind of see What an actual difference it does make look at that um, Without adding a lot of artifacting or noise. I mean obviously in this super sharp image seeing a little bit up in the sky but and so at this stage if this is what you were gonna do, you'd wanna make sure to merge this down. So you would right click on it and uh, click merge down right here. But um, since we're not actually gonna be keeping the sharpening, I'm just gonna actually delete that layer. So now we have our three layers and it's time to export them. So um, the way that you do that is, is you make sure only the layer that you want to export first since this is the first panel the one on the far left it's going to be the one that we do first um, make sure it's the only one turned on go to file save as all right and as you can see i'm just going to put and make a new folder on my desktop called panels and i will rename this Panel one, there you go. And make sure you have TIFF. 
selected here. All right, and then embed color profile Adobe RGB 1998. And then click save. Now this dialog box comes up and there's a couple of things you wanna change here. You wanna change image compression to none. It's probably by default set to zip. Um, so, uh, but we're gonna change it to none because we don't want any, um, like we want it to be maximum quality. So no compression. And then down here, this is also important. You wanna click the bottom selection here, discard layers and save a copy. And that is going to just make sure that none of this other data is in this TIFF file. It's just what's visible on the screen. You're gonna click okay. And boom, it's saved out. We can go to Finder. Oh, the <laughs> clipboard was huge. Go to Finder, Desktop, Panels, and here we are, our TIFF file. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at it. Make sure we like it. And it's loading in. And indeed, it looks gorgeous. And you can kind of scroll around on it, make sure we're good. All right. So now we just need to do that two more times. And now we have our three ready for print um, panels for um, our Bay Photo order. So now we're gonna go back to the gallery and take a look at the print. All right, Capitol Peak is on the wall. And if you would like to come see this print in person uh, in Colorado Springs, we would love to have you. Um, we have like lots of different prints on display and different types of prints. This particular print is what's called a plaque mount. So it's paper that's sealed onto a wood board and then trimmed with a uh, foil. So it looks, it's really a stunning finish um, for a print. We have lots of those. Um, available and on display. We also have metal um, and some various other uh, canvas. Um, there's some ones that I did that I hand mounted, um, which <laughs> I'll have to get into at some at some point. Those are those are kind of interesting. Um, so um, if you enjoyed this video, we would love it if you would hit the like button. Um, and if you like these videos about mountain photography, mountain videography, or just the mountains in general, uh, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you on the next adventure.